part two. You. <laughs> so why do you do what you do? Oh, okay, okay. I. It's fine. Let's bring it. Okay. Um, I think I do what I do because I, even as a young person, you still have the resources to help the world be a better place and solve problems. And I think if you use your resources, you can make the world better. So that's one of Google's um, catchphrases. What can you do to make the world better? And it doesn't matter what age, you can start whenever. I also think that the younger generations now, they look at things in a different way that sometimes is a better method or more effective at solving problems. Oh, well said, well said. <laughs> So where where does your drive come from? I think it relates to the thing I said earlier, it's just that what you can do to make the world better. So so you've accomplished so much at such a young age, but how did you get that sense of direction of like knowing like what you want to do already? I think my mom and my dad also pushed me into thinking that you, you can do anything that you set your mind to and if you use what you've been given you can solve problems and you can make the community better so you got like a, a very empowering mindset with yeah from the beginning oh wow must thank your mom for that <laughs> nice in a birthday card and okay I'll, I'll send this video to her just for her. we'll customize it nicely okay <laughs> then she can play it every day when she wakes up <laughs> so what how did like creating this water absorbing polymer like grow you as a person? I think just the fact that you know that you did something that actually worked and the perseverance it took throughout the project because obviously I didn't get it the first time or the Ooh, second time. I never knew this. <laughs> so did you apply two years ago? Oh no no no, I'm saying like throughout the experimentation. Oh okay. Then you obviously didn't get something that worked the first or second or third time and then the thing when it actually worked then I submitted it to Google. So you had that grit? Yeah. Ooh. So what are, what are some of the things that you did to develop yourself as a person? Um, so throughout the project obviously a lot of the stuff were uh, at home, so to do the stuff not in a lab but at, uh, in your own personal environment, obviously it took a lot of time, perseverance, um, and just looking back at the idea and seeing what you can change. Obviously, you wouldn't get it the first time, and if you look at it with the same perspective, you wouldn't get it the second time either. So, a lot of it was teaching myself how to look at things from different angles. And did you have like any help along the way? Most of the project was by myself at home. Wow. So basically you one person who basically tried to solve like one of the biggest problems facing our country. Yes. And you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so and so what are your strengths? Like what were you so good at that really helped you with your project? I think like just critically analyzing things and obviously you have a problem like drought affecting South Africa, but you can't you have to break it down into a smaller problem you can't just uh, like almost attack it in a larger scale oh, an important scale is always taking something and breaking it down into something that's achievable yeah because like most of us like we'll have a big idea and then it's too big but that we get like must, analysis paralysis. you should have little um little steps of what you want to do so i broke down drought to something uh, affecting crop supply then i broke that down to super absorbent polymers oh wow and so how did you come up with like this idea? Well, I, so, I always had the drive to make the world better. And I guess I started looking at the, fa the things that were affecting South Africa. And if you go to any magazine at the time, even now any magazine, newspaper, you'd hear about the, the things that are affecting South Africa and one of it was the drought. So I think most of it is important is when you're tackling a problem, always look at what is effect, what is being affected in that your community because it's it doesn't really help you solving a problem that you're not even affected by or your community is not affected by so basically you saw a problem that was like personal to you and then you thought of the solution yes 
that's very interesting because Cornell said the same thing to us. <laughs> like he says, he finds a problem, finds a solution, then it's just addictive, like to keep on solving it. Yeah. So, so Katniss Everdeen was mentored by Hamish in yeah. the Hunger Games. So, do you have any mentors? Um, I don't have a. Well, after I won the Google Science Fair, I did get a mentor. Um, after winning the Community Impact, but throughout the project. You needed somebody to help you with health and safety. Obviously, some of the super absorbent polymers you needed. So I, in the project, my mom was my mentor. Oh. But, but right now I have a an, another mentor. Google had assigned me. And and how have they helped you so far? So I had gotten her. Uh, it was a lady as after I won the community impact award, and she was just going through some of the most important things in terms of environmentally friendly things you apply to soil and just helping with my overall knowledge. Oh lovely. So what do you hope to achieve with your polymer invention? Well obviously one of the I hope to solve the problem I started out to create it with which is to improve South Africa's uh, food supply with during periods of drought which um, I've seen that statistics say that the drought will only get worse. So you're going to change the world, <laughs> South Africa and then Africa and the world. <laughs> and how, how do you set your goals? I think it's important to set goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound. You can uh, evaluate it and they're realistic. So they're smart goals. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? I think um, Nelson Mandela, because also in my project I referenced him as somebody in, I always looked at my community and obviously he had an impact on all of us. So just to see what he did throughout his life, not really scientific, um, scientifically based, but just what he did as an inspiration that you can achieve your dreams. Yeah. What and what, uh, what are the skills needed to be like an awesome scientist and inventor? Um, I think the whole idea of you can find a problem, but you have to break it down into something that is achievable. And from there, you'll obviously be able to solve the bigger problem. But if you just look at a problem um, as a broad, at a broad spectrum, it's often difficult to attain. So breaking it down to something that you can achieve is really important. Mm. And, and how, how could one develop those skills? Um, I think just the fact that once you find a problem, always just start. Don't wait for something to happen. Always just try, like I did it at home, most uh, most of the project I did it at home. Sure. So even if you're doing it in a home environment, you can still achieve what you want to achieve and solve a problem. And where do you think, like where can people learn about these skills? Like any website, books, resources? Well, for me, I just, I developed them myself. So I'm okay. sure people, uh, there are websites out there. Okay, wait, tell me how, how did you develop them yourself? Well, just, I looked at previous scientists, what they did, oh. um, taking a problem into a smaller thing that's achievable, um, looking at how they analyze the situation. I didn't really visit any website specifically. So like you basically learn from the best and then you model best. In something that I can achieve. Oh, lovely.